Text on martini in the morning.com. It's Brad Martini Chambers, 925 of the West, 25 after 9 a.m. Pacific time. More twin spins coming up. But I, um, w- I had a thrill a few years ago. Karen and I got, uh, were invited, uh, Wink Martindale invited us to uh, uh, his, um, when he got the ceremony when he got his uh, star in the Hollywood Walk of Fame. And, and uh, a fellow came up, uh, came up behind, behind me and, and he, uh, uh, was looking because he knew that John, he knew that Johnny Mathis was in the in that area somewhere, and he's trying to track him down and uh, and, ha- and have a chat with him. And I, I looked at this I looked at this gentleman and I thought, boy, he looks familiar. I'm trying to think who it is. And I said, my name is Brad Chambers. And he said, uh, my name is Mel Carter. I said, oh my God, one of my favorite one of my all time favorite songs was a big big song for you uh, for you in. Uh, I'm going to date us both. Uh, 1965, maybe? Yes. Does that sound right? Yes. Mel Carter, welcome to Martini in the morning.com. We're going to play that song here in just a minute. It is just, and I, I have to tell you a funny story about this song, and then you can tell me, because I, I, don't, I, know, I don't know any background on it. Um, I work, got out of radio for a couple of years and helped some old friends uh, start a country record label. And we were on a bus tour across the country going out and introducing the record label to, to radio stations. And we did this exercise on the bus. We had a couple artists that we were working with uh, that weren't songwriters, and uh, we, our, our main artist at the time was a songwriter. But we were looking for pop songs that hadn't been covered in any really meaningful way, and certainly hadn't been covered in country. Mm-hmm. And the number one song on our list was this song: Mel Carter on Martini in the Morning dot com. Mel Carter from 1965 on martini I just uh, p- people in our chat lounge are talking Mel about uh, uh, there are people saying uh, uh, one uh, uh, Danielle Rogers in uh, t- in Franklin Tennessee was just saying that her her parents are going crazy. She works in her parents' law office and she said they're going crazy because they danced to that song when they were young. And I and I it just dawned on me well, that I danced I, to it too when yeah, I was young. I, <laughs> I didn't, we were we were all yeah, there once. Yeah, all right. I, but I, I remember that. For, I remember from a junior high dance. It was uh, I started in jun- junior high, probably sixty six or sixty seven. But I remember that was like the big slow dance. I mean, it was, it was everybody loved that song. You know what's so funny about that is because uh, when I got this song. Um, I hated it. Really? I hated it. Yeah, because I considered myself, or I thought I was a jazz singer before I had uh, um, worked with uh, Quincy Jones in 1957. I had a record, an old Ivy Joe Hunter hit called I, I Need You So. And uh, then we had another record, The Richest Man Alive, before on Imperial. And uh, this song, when they brought it to me, and they had literally had to put me in the booth and direct me. To really? sing on the beat. Oh yeah, yeah. You know? And then we had the the middle part where you could stray a little bit. Yeah. But then the then the director. It's pretty came precise. Back on. Yeah. Yes, it yeah. had to be like that. Yeah, it's a beautiful song, it, and, and it's funny because I mean, that was that your biggest top forty hit? Yes. Yeah, that was. I mean, to date. Really. Yeah. Well, you're going to I'm still here. You're so going to try and change that, aren't time, you? Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> so tell me about the new. So, well, before before we get to the new album, uh, you got to tell me what, what you've been up to lately. What's We're, been going on for Mel Carter? Uh, we've been uh, working on a finishing up and, and finished a uh, new CD called Mel Carter, The Other Standards. Mm-hmm. And uh, the reason why we call it The Other Standards is because I grew up with a lot of songs that uh, songs and artists that I liked that people, you know, not, not the Gershwin songs, not the Harold Oral, and not all of those songs, which people are doing right now, mm-hmm. and I've done before, mm-hmm. but there are whole a, a, a wealth of, of of standards out there that I wanted to uh, to do, and I, and I got a chance to do it with this album. I think that's an important point because you know the, there's been kind of a resurgence in the Great American Songbook, and and uh, what's really interesting is that where a lot of people uh, of our generation sort of said, "Hey, wait, that's mom and dad's music. I don't I don't want to listen right. to that." And and you know, and and I, I'm. I think typical of, of people my age, and I'm sure you are too. You know, our, we were listening to R&B, we were listening to rock and roll, and maybe not so much the standards. And what's interesting is, as baby boomers say, "Okay, maybe mom and dad weren't so stupid after all." What's really interesting is it's the next generation back that have no preconceived, right, right. you know. So when somebody like Mel Carter comes out and does some of these other standards, you you kind of you kind of broaden that window mm-hmm. in introducing people to some amazing music. We also have block radio. 
uh, block radio every four hours you had a different genre of music that's right so you got you got a your dose of classical music mm-hmm, mm-hmm. your country music mm-hmm. your it, where I'm from you got bluegrass really you know, because we're across the river from Kentucky okay. so you got bluegrass then you got uh, pop mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then r and b yeah so we have a lot of exposure to yes. different, yeah, to different kinds of music. What what led you to these these particular songs? The al- uh, on the album, the other standards. I mean, what was your criteria? What were you looking for? Well, there were so many songs that uh, we had to eliminate. Uh, but uh, I'm I'm a huge Sonny Till and the Orioles fan, and if you know, Sonny Till and the Orioles had the first hit. With hold me, throw me, kiss me. Ah. In in I think it was 1952. 52. Yeah. And that was before Karen Chandler. Ah. You know? But it was a doo-wop song. Then. Gotcha. That's the way they did it. Um, so I, and I've done uh, a couple of his songs. Uh, so I went back and I said, let me research the people that I liked. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, the artists that I that I knew or felt comfortable with right. when I was growing up. And let me see what I could do with their their <clears throat> songs. And certainly these things are, if you say the titles, then people, oh, I remember that song. Yeah, I remember that song. And and they don't know that that was a standard. Right. One of the things I, I found interesting, you did, you one of my favorite songs, one of, of the standards that are not as well known, um, a song written by... Um, Arthur Schwartz and I think Howard Dietz. Uh, Short, Howard Schwartz wrote with with uh, um, Schwartz and Dietz wrote together a lot. I don't know that they wrote this one together now that I'm thinking about. But Haunted Heart. Um, but you did that as a as a medley with another song. Yes, we stuck a uh, an Irving Berlin song, and uh, but it, but it worked very uh, wonderfully. It's a beautiful uh, beautiful medley. Haunted Heart is just one of those amazing songs. Great lyrics. Mel Carter. On martini in the morning.com. Martini in the morning.com. Haunted Heart and Never Had a Chance. Mel yeah, Carter. He's still my haunted heart. That's a, know, it's an I, amazing. I, 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 Arthur, they don't write things like that anymore. Arthur Schwartz you know? and, and Howard Dietz. And, and I was telling Mel off the, uh, uh, during the song, uh, uh, Carly Simon did uh, one, of the, one of their songs on her Moonlight Serenade album when she finally. You know, she'd been recording standards on all, all of her, almost every pop album she did had a standard on it, and and I and I asked her um, what led her to do that. I mean, like you know, how you know, of the, of being of the pop generation, you know, how she knew those songs, and she said that Arthur Schwartz, when he came to New York to write, mm-hmm. he stayed at her at her house, and she said they used to sit in the living room and listen to him write those kinds of songs. Right. I mean, it's amazing. I mean, those are the the, 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 the stories they tell. The beginning, middle, and end. Right. It's a full story. story in, in, yeah, it's a it's like a little mini play. Yeah, yeah. That, that when you do it, and you do it, and when you get it right, it all comes out. It yeah. comes out on on the. It's I a started to say comes out on the vinyl, but that's. <laughs> <laughs> well, back in the old, we were, and we were talking about that too. We we're talking about the difference in in uh, in audio quality. We were just talking about the fact that you know I. I first played Mel Carter's uh, uh, a couple a couple of your songs that happen to be favorites of mine, but especially "Hold Me, Thrill Me, Kiss Me." I remember playing. Actually, I think I was playing it off of an album because I started in radio in '71, and I was working at uh, at one point uh, in, in, at an oldie station, and because at that point it was about six years old. But but I remember playing it off of a off of a vinyl uh, album, yeah. and we we're just talking about the fact that the old vinyl. There's something about those old vinyl discs, you know, in terms right, of quality. Right. Um, Mel Carter, the new album called The Other Standards. And uh, you got a song on here that's interesting. I mean, a few guys have done it. Uh, 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 Michael Bublé did it recently. And uh, um, our pal Frank Sinatra Jr. did it on an album he did a few years ago. Um, but not, uh, oh, and, and actually, now I'm, now I'm, I'm uh, contradicting myself. Sam Cooke did a great version of this, too. Um, Cry Me a River, that's... Uh, right on his pop album. Yeah, 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 yeah really good stuff. Yes. But, you, but you, you you do a beautiful job with Cry Me a River. Thank you. We, um, I, I, I wanted to uh, do the song and do it from the uh, male's right. uh, point of view. Yeah, because it usually gets told from the other well, gender. Most love songs are all written for a female yeah. because they... Go they, through they got the emotions go right exactly they don't realize we go through the same thing we just handle it a little differently <laughs> and not well <laughs> yeah. and not well at that um but this it's it's funny this is a song that that's uh you know that's 
I mean, for a long time, it was it was Julie London's Julie song. Julie London, and and then and now, and a few people start you know taking it on, and and uh, what what was it like doing this song? And and no, this is one of those great standards, and the writer's still around, and he, uh, boy, I know he loves to get in contact with people who record his song. Well, Arthur Hamilton called me, you know, you know, says, uh, "Hello, Mel," and I said, uh, "Hello." He said, "This is Arthur Hamilton." And so it took me like one, two, three clicks before I said, Arthur Hamilton. He said, yes. He said, I'm listening to your album. I, I, your, your rendition of Cry Me Your River is just superb. I said, you've got to be kidding. You know, and I said, but I'll take that. You know, <laughs> well, what a great treat to have the uh, to have the writer of a classic song yeah. like this. You know, listen to your version, call you up, and compliment you. It's Mel Carter. The album is called The Other Standards. It's on martiniinthemorning.com. Martini in the morning.com, Mel Carter, Arthur Hamilton's uh, Cry Me a River from the album The Other Standards. One of the gals in the chat lounge said, Brad, tell Mel we're all fawning over him. <laughs> you have a bunch of fans, man. I'm telling you, we, Mother Miriam's already trying to get him booked somewhere, you know. He, and, and you don't get a little airplay going, and yeah. uh, it'd be nice and to then, see And then, yes, I'll come. And I haven't been here. Uh, I think we were in um, Cerritos in April of last year. It's a great so, venue. Uh, uh, so, so that that must I have been. I, I've got to get a shout out and yes, kudos to please. John Rodby, who is the arranger uh, and uh, my partner in crime on this particular album. And I, I, I we just fit you know, each other like a glove. And having a having an arranger, not only that's good at what they do, but somebody that that knows how to arrange things so they make sense for you for your yeah. vocal style and i was just it, i was just telling mel off the air that, that your what he did with cry me a river is perfect it's suited perfectly for you well you know when we're rehearsing and we sit down at the piano you know and we rehearse and uh, there are, there are things you know like from the time that you first had the con- uh, had the concept of uh, of a song mm-hmm. to the finished product it changes many times of course well, everything that I would do on in the rehearsal, he would he would keep it, and then it would come up in the arrangement. I said, "Well," he said, "Well, you did it. You can do it." You know, and I said, "Are you kidding, man? I, I don't remember doing this." But you know, like you know, <laughs> yeah, like I don't remember five minutes ago. I understand. I understand that part. Hey, uh, you said when uh, when uh, Arthur Hamilton uh, phoned you, uh, and I'm I'm always curious. You know, you expect the. Um, uh, you expect the writer, or rather, yeah, the writer of a song to say, "Yeah, yeah, I dig my song. Mm-hmm. I dig my song." Right. But did he have any uh, any other comments on the uh, on any of the other songs? Yeah, he said he, uh, you know, like heard uh, some a few of the songs he hadn't heard. He said, "There's a song on here called uh, um, uh, My Lips Can't Find the Lyrics." He said, "Where did you get that from?" And I said, "Oh, oh, really?" And he said, yeah. He said, that's quite a standard. And I said, are you kidding? I wrote that. That's my song that I wrote. And he and liked he it. Said, and he liked it. And I said, this man has got to be kidding. I went on the phone, you know, like with, with all of the things that he's written. Yeah. And from the amount of, and then he would compliments my song. And uh, I, I just said, well, okay, okay, I'll take it. I'll take it. Mel Carter on Martini in the Morning. The, the album is called The Other Standards. My lips can't find the lyrics on martiniinthemorning.com. Martini in the morning.com. Mel Carter, my lips can't find the lyrics. Apparently, they did. <laughs> As, but but, but how, the love songs in my heart. But how cool that uh, how cool that uh, uh, Arthur Hamilton. Here's a guy who's you know arguably wrote one of the biggest standards yes. of all time. Yeah. And, and he took notice. And he yeah he right. paid attention to that song. That's amazing. Hey, so um, you know when you when you record a song like uh uh we were and again I'm sorry to to. Uh, go crazy over over you know an old song of yours, but um, it it is kind of you, you, it became your signature song, didn't it? Hold yes, me. it did. Yeah. I'm, I'm I'm glad to have a song like that. That's a signature song, and uh, the uh, the string sweep Nick DeCarroll did. It was his first writing assignment. Yeah, and uh, uh, for him to put down that string sweep is one of the most uh, uh, famous openings of records there is yeah I'll uh, bet. and it was his first writing job you know that's funny that you mentioned i i hadn't even thought about how how significant a, a, a little piece of music at the beginning of a song can be uh, i was just telling a friend a, a friend has uh, 
some people, friends we had uh, breakfast with on Sunday up in Santa Barbara. Uh, it turned out that uh, we both know uh, David Foster, and um, and I remember having David in the studio once, and I, I asked the, the stupid question you never ask a writer, you know, especially somebody who's written a lot of songs. You know, what of all the songs you've written or produced, what's your favorite? What's your favorite? And the good news was we had a keyboard, a Kurzweil, his favorite keyboard, sitting on the counter, and. And I happen to notice his fingers starting to move on the key because he's like trying to think. He said, well, I did this or I did that. But I'm watching his fingers. So while I ask him this question, I turned up the, the, the channel for the uh, keyboard on the console and he's playing the intro to the Earth, Wind & Fire song After mm. the Love Is Gone, which he played with Earth, Wind & Fire. And, and it's interesting you mentioned that because, I mean, because that, that, uh, that intro piece to uh, Hold Me. I did a song with him. You did a song with David? I did a song on... And you survived? <laughs> I, I, it was great. Yeah, no, know, he's great. He's wonderful. Great. You, I don't remember the name of the song, though. That's... Uh, he's... Uh, and now, you know, he's back... Uh, he's kind of moving back toward jazz a little more. He just took over uh, Verve Records. And, uh, wow. What a, okay. It's good, for our, it's good for our genre, my yeah. friend. You know, because David has had some success with the likes of... Uh, what's that kid, Buble, or whatever his name is, you know? So... Uh, Mel Carter on martiniinamorning.com. The album is called The Other Standards. Mother Miriam's already calling around to uh, call <laughs> around to venues trying to get a book. We, you know, it, I, I have to tell you, it would be really, it would really be cool. I think because there is, um, I think there's sort of a disconnect that we we are slowly seeing get reconnected. And you know, you've done, you know, you had some huge, huge pop hits and here you are doing doing some jazz that's that's sort of making a resurgence. And I think, you know, you're kind of bridging a sort of bridging a divide here. And it'd be great to get you out there I, performing. I'm also from that school of of a performer that that's an entertainer, a complete entertainer. Right, you do a show, uh, you don't just stand there and hug a microphone. You know, I can't dance, you know, like, <laughs> uh, not really dance, but I have movements, I have the thing, but I do the complete show, and it's, uh, I'm from that era. I watched all those uh, great, great performers, and uh, I took a little bit, and, and, and pay attention, they all, we all take from each other. Of course. You know, uh, that's what makes each person greater or great because you are aware that somebody else has something that maybe you could use and you pull from that and you take it you know speaking of entertainment uh, when um, when we were playing uh, um, hold me touch or hold me through me kiss hold me, me tuck me <laughs> <laughs> when we were playing that earlier i like that one too <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we're gonna we're gonna skip all the other stuff but, no. uh but when uh, one of our listeners i, me I mentioned uh the, she, she said her parents danced to that song yeah they danced in their office while you while we were playing uh, it on the radio so station nice. that is really nice. all right you two get a room um <laughs> what you look like you have something very important to say i don't want to interrupt you go ahead huh go ahead we're just having a conversation we're just chatting what Wait, uh, you forgot what you were going to say. You were gonna lost say. your train of thought. I was, yeah, I did. Well, hey, Mel, um, Mel Carter, Mel Carter on MartiniMorning.com. His new album's called The Other Standards. Sounds like it just came to I you. Know it was. Yes, it did. You did a PBS show. I don't know whether it was a rerun or not. We've done four of them. Really? Oh, because yeah. I remember seeing that, and that actually that was the first time that I had seen or heard you in such a long time, and that was fabulous. I, thank you, thank you. I have to say that uh, that kind of right made put me before the audiences it out there more uh, um, because I had been silent for a long while. That's, the, that's what I was going to ask you. I had been silent for a long while, and then we did a one, and they asked me to come back and do another one, and I had the distinct honor so far of being the only artist to have been invited to do tributes to other to other artists uh, to other artists and um, but what have you been doing all of this time I've been I working mean, I've, I, I mean working as a vocalist yes oh you have right. so just in and around era? most most like it's mostly back east you know oh you know do you play you Atlantic know. City hmm? do you ever do Atlantic City Play Atlantic yes, City? Atlantic City, uh, uh -huh. um, other places in New Jersey, Philadelphia. My hometown. Um, 
So we just haven't had the pleasure of having you out here. No, and I used to work out here all the time. You know what's funny, and and this this takes me back to my early days in radio because this was still the case in the early '70s. But back in the day, if you will, to part, okay. borrow somebody's expression, back in the day, there were more regional hits. And were you? Did you find your music more popular back east than out here, or or, or were you pretty accepted no, across the country? No, they were across the board. You know, we had. Uh, first of all, it started in '63 when a boy falls in love, and that song was written by Sam Cooke, and I was Sam's protege, and that was the fir- historically, it's the first black-owned company by uh, a major uh, black artist that was on RCA. He uh-huh. was on RCA, and he had a, a pre-Motown. He had uh, uh, Saw Records. And then Derby Records, When a Boy Falls in Love, launched Derby Records. And it was the first pop record to break through the English invasion. Really? Yeah. Wow. So historically, it's, it's, it has a history of it being... Uh, I want to play. I want to play another one, uh, an old. And I just realized it's, uh, that we're technically out of time. But we'll, if you don't mind, can you stick around a few more minutes? Oh, sure, okay. I can. I want to play another song from the new album. But I want the one song, and I know other people had hits with this song, but yours, yours was always my favorite version of this song. Mel Carter on Martini in the Morning dot com. Martini in the Morning dot com. It's uh, Mel Carter. I, you know, there were several versions, several hit versions of that song, but that one came out in uh, uh, 65, 66? 66. Yeah. And we had, we had hold, uh, hold Me, Throw Me, Kiss Me, uh, All of a Sudden My Heart Sings, mm-hmm. You, 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 Take Good Care of Her. Uh, Take Good Care of Her. That, about that. Yeah. Uh, that song. Uh, we had about six, seven records in a row. To see Mother Marion was just saying she has so many memories of the songs, which it's is remarkable because she doesn't remember yesterday, much less. You really? Know. So that your songs must really stand out. And I still think if you put them out today, they would be hits. Well, yeah. one that's happening right now from this album, haha, got is. Um... <laughs> so you had to get me back on track with the new album. <laughs> uh, show them the cover. Show Crying the cover. in the chapel. Ah, uh, uh, that was a big song. What's uh, who did? I know Elvis. Well, did Elvis it had a, had. Actually, here we go. This is, it's it was Sunny Till and the Oreos oh, who right. did it, yeah. and then it, uh, they did it again with just the Oreos. Really? Yeah. What kind of that? Uh, I, I tell you what, I want to play one other uh, one other song from the album. We'll come back. We'll play that before we're done. Um, Mir- did you have a question? You look like you had a question on your lips. No? Okay, never mind. Sometimes she looks. She'll come running over here like she's got something to say. And then I'll say. By the time she gets here, she well, forgets. And the and the and the 2007 hit. With the band of Oz was uh, my blue heaven. Oh, we were just talking about that. My yeah, blue the old heaven. the old uh, 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 chubby checker. No, Fast no, Domino. that was Fast, Fast Domino. Domino. That's right. With the okay. band of Oz, and they're a great band out of uh, beach music. Uh, the beach music. Yeah, that's it's not not what we call beach no, no, music no, no. on this no, coast. No, no, no. It's, it's it's the dance the music. East Coast there Carolinas. In the East, yes. Yeah, yeah, big stuff out there. All right, uh, we're we're gonna play your version of uh, uh, "Crying in the Chapel." We're gonna play that Mel Carter on Martini in the Morning from the album Other Standards. We'll play that after "Goody Goody Martini in the Morning." Mel Carter. Mel Carter on Martini in the I was just telling Mel off the air that you know one of the things that um, one of the things that when when you put out an album, I learned I never as a disc jockey I never thought about this really, but when I the, my brief time in the record business, one of the things I learned they put a lot of time into how you sequence the album. Yes, and I was so imp- I thought that play, setting goody goody out front. It's, I mean, it's a big fun arrangement, and it, mm-hmm. it's like it's like you you really get someone's attention when you open with you know with that song. I try to sequence uh, uh, the album the way I would do an act if I were coming out and doing a show. If I was coming out and doing a show, that's what I would you know. You have to have the opener, right? And then uh, it then it has to move upscale, you know, to bring you up to a pitch. You know? Makes total sense. Yeah, kind of kind of uh, mm-hmm. ebb and flow, set the mood. You know, Mel Carter. The album is called The Other Standards, and this, so 
This is an interesting song because we. This is something we really struggle with here. We are not a rock and roll oldie station, you know. There that there have been a lot of rock and roll oldies, although there aren't many of those anymore. Yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, this, those songs of the late '50s and early '60s, so many of them were influenced by the great standards, by the Great American Songbook, and yet they became whether the style was doo-wop or whether the style was rock and roll or whatever you know it, they, they that kind of became its own thing it became its own radio format if you will and we and we sort of stay away from it and stay closer to uh standards in general you know right. i mean you know swing and stuff i mean you know, it's mm-hmm. like uh you know this these, these songs so many of them were meant to be you know uh, well like goody goody i mean that's a that's a whether frank sinatra does it or mel carter that's a kick butt song you know yeah. um but but crying in the chapel is an interesting song it's one of a handful of songs we play a few by nat king cole for instance that are right on the verge of that sort of that doo-wop sound like, like a song like um i don't know maybe day in day out or uh uh Oh, what's the other one? I was just trying to think. There's another Nat King song. A couple of Nat King Cole songs we play. There's some Sam Cooke stuff that that yeah. that straddles that. Fence. Well, we we talked about. It. He did he did Cry Me a River and he did uh, uh, a couple other. Well, anyway, the, my point is, Crying in the Chapel is one of those songs I've never really knew exactly how to categorize it. You know, do you see it as a as early R and B or do you see it as a standard? I see it. Well, I think. The fact that Elvis did it made it a standard. But gotcha. when you would, I stayed closer to the uh, the Orioles, the uh, Sonny Till and yeah. the Orioles, and uh, without having the doo wop and everything, and 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 made the flavor not not to destroy the integrity of the song, but to, to and and I had never heard the words before. When I first heard the song, I thought Sonny Till and the Orioles did it, so it had to be an R and B song, you know. And uh, uh, when I did the uh, uh, read the lyrics, and I said, "Wow, look at this! This is very inspirational," because uh, I thought it was a guy who got hurt, and he he wound up in the chapel, and yeah. he was praying, "Oh, send her back to me!" You know how we, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I gotta have her to send her back, yeah. but it, it wasn't like that. And whatever he he went there and found what was missing in him to make him a complete being. Mother Miriam had a question for you. Wait, wait, let me turn on your microphone. There it you go. was Crying in the Chapel. Now, that was one of my favorite songs. All of my friends we used to hang out in Atlantic City. And yeah. that would be playing. We never took that as a religious song. Well, it. it Even though it might have. It had some. The, the description of the. Re- the way. description that they call it is a pseudo religious song. Uh, and it's. It, uh, it's a, a faith. But it has to do with anything. You know, when you when when your when your heart has been broken, mm-hmm. uh, uh, I think that you the person that you reach out to the is is a, is a supreme being. In my case, it would be God to give me that inner uh, strength. Okay, uh, but see, we were kids and we didn't see it that way. What, we just saw it a great love song, and it was so sad. So you saw it the way the way that you originally thought it was yes, intended. That, yeah, I thought it because oh, yeah. because it was done by. Sonny Till and the Oreo loved them. <laughs> <laughs> they could do do what Diddy. Yeah, and I, they I mean, I'm just saying that we never looked at it as a, any kind of faith or whatever. We looked at it as a love song, heartbroken because the boy left us, and and we just loved that song. Well, of course, in Mother Miriam's case, see, he was, he see, you, you, the, beca- you, you were hurt, and the boy left. Yes, see, see? that's the, exactly we, the way you originally there, interpreted it. Yeah, you know? yeah. see, yeah. I'm connected to you. <laughs> and, see. <laughs> And in, in Mother Miriam's case, I have though, no heart. in Mother Miriam's case, though, the boy Don't was running it. for his Don't. life. <laughs> Mel Carter on Martini in the Morning dot com. The album is called The Other Standards, Crying in the Chapel on Martini in the Morning. I'm telling you, if our chat lounge is any uh, example of the reaction you're going to get from this album, it's pretty amazing. Oh, They're going great. crazy. Mel Carter on Martini in the Morning dot com. I have to tell you, it's a it's a real. I mean, that day that we met at uh, the event in Hollywood, it was. Uh, I, I t- probably told a thousand people about it. i remember going back and talking about it on the radio and playing your uh, playing a couple of my favorite songs from you back then and uh it's a real honor to have you here uh, this is it's a, my pleasure the yes. album is uh, the album is just terrific it's called the other standards uh just a, 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 a really interesting um 
uh, collection of uh, incredible songs, including an original from uh, Mr. Carter here. Yeah. That uh, Mr. Ham- <laughs> uh, Arthur Hamilton, Arthur Hamilton seemed to, to like. Yeah. Of it, yes. Absolutely. I want to find. Let's see, I was going to play one more. I think um, if you don't mind, if I may be selfish and if I can pick, um, there's another song on here that I, uh, when my wife and I listened to it the first time through. Uh, hang on a second, Mel. I'm sorry. Uh, oh, it's this. Okay. Um, I hope you'll come back and and especially when Mother Miriam gets you booked in you know 100 venues yeah, around Southern okay. California. You know we'll be there to see you. Mel Carter on MartiniInTheMorning.com. The album called The Other Standards is this on uh, Amazon or where can we get it? It you uh, CDBaby.com, uh, iTunes. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, you can download Amazon. it. Good. Uh, you can come to my site www.mel-carter.com. Um, but it's it's out it's out all over. Uh, I have to tell you one very funny thing. Mel sent me an email about about two weeks ago. I think he sent me the email saying that the album was out, and and I, I told Mother Mary, I said, "Hey, I got an email from uh, Mel Carter," and she said, "The Mel Carter." And I played a little bit of uh, uh, of uh, uh, "Hold Me," and uh, um, and she said, "Oh my!" And she's calling all of her friends back in Philly, saying, "You're never gonna guess. Mel Carter called the radio station." Martini in the Mel Carter.